Hey guys, welcome to another painting review. Painting review? Painting tutorial. This time we're going to be painting up the shield. And the idea here is we're going to teach you how to do metallics three different ways. This was provided by Dust Till Dawn Studios, as always. Go and check that stuff out. It's amazing. Now, first step for doing any metallic, and I will do this every single time, is to prime it, obviously. Do it with everything you paint, prime it. But the most important thing I think here is to prime in black. I think a black prime makes metallic shop so much better and richer. I run out of spray paint, unfortunately, so I've got to be a peasant. Gosh, my life is so hard. i actually got to paint it on with a brush. Um, so, as always, we're using my favourite, the Kylos Colours Black. Um, this stuff's amazing. Super, super, super dark. Just rich, runs well. It's amazing. So we're going to get this primed quick. We're going to move on to step two. As always, we will be using the wet palette for this, and even, you can see mine's uh, a little bit messy. has a lot on it. But we are also going to be thinning it down a little bit just to make it help it spread a little bit better. So let me get the black on here and we'll start painting up. Okay, and again, we're going to be using my dry brushes for this because I find they're just amazing for spread and coverage. We're just going to rub it all over like this. And you can see it works like a dry brush. So we are probably going to have to do two coats just to be sure. But we're going to make sure we get nice and deep in all the recesses. Cover it everywhere. So let me get this painted up and we'll come back. Okay, and there is our shield primed. I've got a little bit down here. There we go. So we're going to let this dry quick, and then we can continue with the next step. Okay, now that our lovely shield has dried, we're going to move on to step two. Now, step two is, of course, silver. If you know the channel and you know me, you know I love using airbrush silver with a brush. The colour's amazing. So thin that you don't need to run it down. It's a perfect... It's I swear by using this stuff. I reckon if someone gives it a go, it'll probably change the way they paint. I promise you. So again, we're going to get this on our wet palette. Okay, so that's on our wet palette. Just be of note. Don't know if you can see it probably on the camera. It will separate. Just make sure you mix it together before you start. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to get it on our brush. And we're going to hit the whole thing. Look how nice and vibrant the colour is. And the good thing about this is, because it's an airbrush paint, it will run into all those cracks, but it won't, because you're using it with a brush, be perfect. And I'll show you what I mean, because I'm going to show you a head that I've been painting up for my personal collection, um, which I put over a black prime, and it makes the silver really pop, but gives it a rugged look still. So let's paint all of this. Get it all over my fingers. See? One coat. And it's done. And that took four drops out of the bowl to get that effect. And look how perfect it is. So that's the first way I would do a metallic. Um, and when it dries, you'll see this effect, which I'm about to show you. So let me pop this down. So yeah, like I was saying, I am working on a figure for my own customer collection. And this is using the same effect. So black prime with the silver all over it. And you'll see how it doesn't fully properly cover if you do like a lighter version of it, despite how thin it is. Get this nice little like dirt look still. Obviously a lot of that is the sculpt itself, but just know if you want like a nice shiny armor, but it doesn't look pristine, use your dry brush, use some airbrush silver, get the perfect effect. Again, this is from a different sculptor but a very similar effect. Very similar effect. So just like to note, if you want to get that sort of shiny, pristine looking armor, but still battle damaged, this is the way to go. This is how I would do it personally. Okay, now that our silver is fully dried, as you can see, that is the effect it has had. So we're gonna, as I said, we're gonna do metallics three different ways, but it's kind of five in a loose, loose, loose way. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use our flesh terrors red. You can use any contrast. We're going to use a shade. This is for you and orange. Again, you can use any. Give me a nice little shake. Bit of ASMR for you guys. Right. Now we don't want too much. And we're not going to bother using the wet palette for this part. So, I will be using the regiment brush from Army Painter, which is this one. Great little brush. Duncan, 
from Warhammer, or what was Warhammer, Tooth and Coats Man. He generally uses this paint. And what we're going to do is we're going to go all over the dragon's here. And you'll see the effect that contrast has over a silver just straight out of the bowl. Like such. It doesn't need to be neat because this is just a demo. Remember to work fast with contrast because they do dry, some of them very quickly. So if you're doing this properly, you would want to be a bit more careful. For me, again, like I said, this is just a demo, so we're not going to worry too much. Come all the way down here. That'll do. We can now close this. Rinse our brush off. Next is the shade, so Fuegan Orange. Get some on your brush, into the lid, just to make sure it's not too thick. And again, we're just gonna go over the cross on this section, just so you can see the difference. There you go, now we're gonna let both of these dry. So you can see how these look just straight over the top of the metallic. And then we're going to go on to what I typically tend to do. So, let's set these dry quick. Okay, so this is how it looks. As you can see, the contrast is very flat. It looks nice. The colour's rich and vibrant, but it is very flat. The shade, on the other hand, does have this nice like metallic sheen to it. Um, so, yeah, if I was to do this, you could put the shade over and it would look fine. Um, if you wanted to give like a metallic... If you want just like a duller metallic, like obviously you could use a copper colour or whatnot, but you just want like a duller metallic-y colour, putting a shade over top of silver, perfect. Next thing we're going to do is use our secret weapon, Lamy Medium. The reason we're going to do this is we're going to mix it with the contrast to put a really thin coat down, and we're going to use it with the shade to put a really thin coat of that down. Now to do this, we're going to cover this part here and here with the contrast, and the outskirts here, we're going to cover with the shade. So... The way I do this is a two to one ratio. So we want one part contrast when I find my paintbrush. It's up here. One part contrast. That's gone in the silver. One part contrast, we'll put that here, to two parts Lamium. Now when it comes to Lamium medium, it is a clear paint, so if you do put your brush in it and it's not got all the colour off, you will contaminate the Lamium. A lot of people use a dropper bottle for this, um, which I do want to get to be honest, that is a great idea. So one part, I place it just underneath. Two parts. Mix it together and you'll get a much thinner contrast colour. We might put one more in there. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. There we go. The Flesh Terror's Red is a very, very, very vibrant one. So... Get some on our brush, like such. And we're just going to place it all over the copper here. And you should see what happens. You can already see it's so much thinner than it was than when we put it straight at the top. Again, we're not going to be too gentle. It almost has like a blood effect slash consistency using this contrast so there you go that is that we're gonna let that dry we'll see how that looks in the meantime fuego and orange now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be clever this time we're gonna start the line you know <laughs> so again we're gonna do two you know we'll do three just for safety there we go Mm, 
mix it in. You'll see this is a lot thinner. They're already thin enough as it is, but this is obviously a lot, lot, lot thinner. Get some on our brush. And again, we're just going to go over. We'll do it up here. And you'll see it's almost non-existent. You can obviously see the colour a little bit, but it's not like the contrast. And also you can change the ratio. So when it dries, if you're unhappy with how this looks, try two drops. Try one drop. Like such. The other good thing is, if you try this and you're like, oh, I want to have it sort of blended with the Lamium, you could work them together. So you have this orangey red effect going on. Which I'll show you here. So you'll see how it goes from the orange at the top and sort of blends down into the red. So we're going to let this dry. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And then you can see how we've done the metallics with this and how it will look over the whole piece. Okay, now this is how it looks when it's dried. As you can see, the red itself is a lot duller. It still has that metallic sheen to it. So if you haven't got a nice sort of like red or whatever colour um like metallic or you just want like a very flat one that isn't too shiny but still has that sheen to it then Lamy medium and contrast is the way to go um i've used this for quite a few things obviously this isn't perfect because i've done it very quick just as a demonstration so there's lots of pooling and stuff but honestly this is the way to go instead of just putting contrast over the top do this another way you can do it and i've done this before is the dry brush um so have a black surface dry brush some silver dry brush some gold some silver gold so working up your gradient and then put the thin down contrast over and it does give it a bit more of a pop because of the gold has a bit more of a, um, a shine to it almost. But this is what I would go with. Either putting a shade over and getting that muted sort of metallic -y colour or a Lamium contrast. The good thing about the contrast is it will act still like a contrast. So as you can see up here, it has fallen into the crevices and given it still that um, shade that you would need as well as making it flat on top. Something like this, as you can see, even despite the crevices, everything's the same colour. One thing I have noticed with the shades. And as you can see here, as I was showing you before, we have got the orange and then into the red. We get that nice gradient because of the Lamium. Again, just another thing to think about. Um, works amazingly. You can also do it from contrast to contrast. So you could have a blue going into a purple, for example, and just use your contrast, or your Lamium medium, sorry, to work that gradient through. Um, yeah, I think Lamy Medium is a secret weapon when it comes to doing anything, in my opinion. But doing metallics, this is a nice little way to spice it up. If you enjoyed, please drop a video like, it helps me amazingly. If you're new and you're not subscribed but you'd like to, that'd also be amazing. Hopefully, guys, see you in the next one. Bye, guys.